Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. Hey guys, thanks for being listeners of the show. Go to dentalimplantpractices.com and find all of our resources. Also find us on Facebook, Dental Implant Practices page on Facebook. And go to iTunes and leave me a review on iTunes so we can help spread the message. Thanks. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Implant Practices podcast. I'm your host, Philip Gordon. And today it's a huge honor for me to introduce Dr. August D. Alavera. August is a leader in implant dentistry, and he is a uh, private practicing dentist, does some lecturing and some teaching, and has uh, written a couple books on implants. So as far as I'm concerned, that makes him the go-to specialist for implant dentistry. So August, thanks for taking some time out and being on the show today. Oh, thanks for inviting me. I would love to jump right into a little bit about yourself. Uh, Like I was telling you, I'd, I'd love for you to do kind of a a breakdown of your dental. We can go as far back as you like, but, it, but if you just want to pick it up at, at where you went to dental school, some of your training, maybe a, a residency that you've done, how you've gotten to the, the private practice you're in now, and then kind of what your practice looks like uh, most days. Sure. Uh, yeah. You know, I went to the University of Washington. So I'm originally from Seattle. I graduated in 1997, my now ex wife. <laughs> was uh, wanted to move to LA. So um, I knew that I, I had to move from the University of Washington to LA. So I ended up doing a general practice residency um, associated with UCLA um, at a VA hospital here in LA. And um, I, I did that. I took the boards um, and practicing in LA. I learned how to place implants in my GPR But it was a long time ago. So it was in 1997. And um, even back then, a general dentist placing implants was kind of frowned upon. So going out into the real world, I wanted to associate for a couple of years. So for about three years, I did a bunch of different associateships. I found the practice that I wanted. Uh, It was a really small practice. It was open six hours a day, three days a week. So I bought it. I worked there three days a week. I associated two days a week. And um, after probably about 10 years in practice, then I decided, hey, you know what? Things are kind of slowing down. I'm referring out all these implant cases. I should probably start placing implants. So I actually um, took some non-hands-on courses. So I did the A to Z implant continuum online. I took a bunch of implant courses. Because I had some implant background, it wasn't that big of a reach. But that being said, um, you know, I think that all of us um, as general dentists are kind of placing implants anyway. You know, if we extract, uh, you know, teeth and we do them surgically extracted, um, if we do endo, especially rotary endo, we're doing everything that we do in implantology. Now, I wouldn't advise a newbie just to start placing implants based on that, but um, you don't have to go through a big residency to do it. There's lots of three or four day courses that can kind of get you started in implantology. So I did that, um, started placing implants on Dental Town. I started a thread called Implants for Dummies, which um, I just kind of chronicled what I was going through. You know, as someone who just started placing implants, um, what were my um, kind of problems that I was having? And one thing that I really love about Dental Town is there's a lot of people there that just want to help you. So I would have issues. I would uh, place an implant. I would, you know, put a cover screw on it. And I remember distinctly doing primary closure on a case that I wanted to do as a two-stage procedure. And after a couple of weeks, the patient came back and said, hey, I can kind of see some metal sticking out there. And I was totally freaked out. And I'm like, oh my God, I can see the cover screw. And I went on Dental Town and I posted it. And one of uh, the more experienced implantologists said, hey, it's no big deal, you know, you're just looking at the top of the implant. It doesn't necessarily mean it fails. So if you're a newbie, uh, Dental Town is just a great resource for it. So I did that for a while. Um, a, uh, 
owner of Implant Direct, uh, Dr. Gerald Misnick. Uh, if you've been doing implants for a long time, you probably know uh, Dr. Nisnik. Dr. Nisnik uh, invented the internal connection. So prior to Dr. Nisnik with his core implant, everything was external hacks. So he's definitely a pioneer. Sent me an email and said, hey, let's have lunch. And I said, hey, you know, I, I started this thread. It's really cool. I, um, I'd like to maybe write a book about it. And uh, he had some really great animations and, and images on his site. I said, well, can I use your images? And he said, sure. So I wrote my first book, which is uh, Implants Made Easy, and it's just a picture book on how to do super basic implants, so posterior implants for the general dentist. And that took off, and I started lecturing, and I started lecturing for uh, Implant Direct in the beginning, and then Serona later on with Guided Surgery. And then I wrote a second book called uh, Guided Implantology Made Easy, and um, that's sort of been my forte nowadays is guided implant surgery. Well, that's, you know, uh, a good, you know, you, you, you made a logical progression there from, okay, let me get out, let me get experienced, let me get my own practice, let me start placing implants, and then let me develop further. And, and I think that's a good progress because you're not coming out of school and saying, okay, let me do a full arch case. Um, but, you know, you, you realize, hey, there's a need for this in my practice. Let me get competent in dentistry, and then let me expand my skills as uh, as they come up. And so you've you know kind of gone about it the right way. And and um, you know I, I think like you said, those resources on Dental Town and those key connections with those people have probably um, you know big big some been big influences in in your um, you know taking those next steps. Sure. Just one thing I wanted to add is that um, there's lots of continuums out there where uh, dentists you know, take six weeks out of the year to, to learn implantology. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a fan of um, sort of a la carte type courses. So as you said, learning as you go. So take a course on posterior implants. Don't even try an anterior implant or an immediate implant for a while. Then take a course on anteriors or immediate and get good at that. So there's only so much your brain can process. So if you take sort of a lot of these continuums, just throw so much great information at you, but you're just kind of not ready. There's that quote, you know, the, uh, the, the teacher is ready when the student appears or something to that extent. When you're ready to learn, um, take a course and, and, and go further. Yeah, you know, I would have to agree with that. I think, you know, the, the, the current trend is, okay, well, let me take this, uh, this dedicated course where it's six or eight or 10 courses in a row and you go from A to Z and they're, they're trying to bring you up from infancy stage all the way up to be Carl Misch. And, you know, that's not realistic. I mean, it's a, it's a one, two, four, five, ten year journey. And you have to realize what stage am I at now? What do I need to do next? You know, and, and it's like, it's like climbing the stairs, you know, you're not, you're not going to take an elevator to the top. You're, you're going to do it the old fashioned way and climb every single right. stair. So what's the next stair in front of me that I need to do? And, and I would have to agree. I, I kind of like the a la carte uh, CE and, you know, okay, okay, well, I've mastered posteriors. N n what problems am I seeing? Okay, then I'm, let's go to, you know, I immediate posteriors or, or one stage or, you know, okay, now let's, let's, let's look at anteriors and then, you know, let's look at, you know, implant bridges and then let's look at implant over sure. So it's, you know, you, you need to kind of get good at one thing before you move on to the next. And, and that takes, you know, practice in your, in your dental practice and, and refining, yeah. your, refining your craft. And, and picking up the tricks that, you know, that, that work along the way. Absolutely, I agree. So you do a fair amount of teaching as far as implants are concerned. Talk with me and our listeners what you're doing right now as far as teaching. I know you do some teaching with uh, Serona and Implant Direct. Is that correct? I do. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I teach a number of courses um, for Implant Direct. Um, I teach two courses. I teach Implant Restorative. And then I also teach 3D implantology. So, um, you know, it's funny, the implant restorative course. So we go back to Dr. Nisnik, who um, I sat down with him in, in uh, about maybe about five years ago. And I was restoring hybrids and overdentures. And I had to be honest with you, I had no clue what I was doing. Um, in dental school, I had no education. I bought Carl Misch's, you know, contemporary implant dentistry. 
And I was trying to figure out what to do, but I, I didn't know, you know, how to take a, you know, an impression for a hybrid. You know, you have to do these little jigs and you have to loop the jigs together and do all these things. So I went to Dr. Nisnik and I said, hey, you know, we should do a course on implant restorative. So when to do a custom abutment versus a stock abutment? Uh, you know, what are the indications for a screw retained crown? How many attachments do you need for an overdenture? You know, what's, when should I use a locator or when should I use a hater bar? And he said, you know, August, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. No one's going to ever want to go to that course. Uh, and, and so it kind of died. And after a while, um, I got asked by Implant Direct um, to do this course. So I got to be honest with you. It's, I, I love gutted surgery, but the restorative course is my favorite course. So we teach dentists how to do all sorts of weird stuff, like pick up impressions for locators and, um, you know, how do you use CLA abutment versus a zirconia abutment? Um, so there's, there's a ton of great information there. I, I teach a guided surgery course for Implant Direct, which is sort of a, an open source course. So I'm a big fan of CIREC and Galeos and Serona. And most of my teaching is with that company. But at Implant Direct, we wanted to keep it um, generic for everyone else. So our 3D implantology course, we use a program called 3D Diagnostics, which is uh, any comb beam user can use it, whether you have a Galileo or an iCAT or a plan mecca, um, you can use any machine. That was 3D guide topics? Uh, it's called 3D implantology. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's about guides. Okay. Yeah. So it's how, how to use guided surgery software, how to get a guide, and actually how to even make your own guide. So we, uh, 3D diagnostics give you the option of uh, exporting to STL and 3D printing. So that's kind of a cool course. Yeah, those you know those are right on because I think um, you think the restorative aspect would uh, be very easily understood, but but I'm I'm finding it's not because one they're not really having time or the emphasis on it in dental school. And so that there's some limitations there. And also, if you've replaced some, maybe you've, maybe you've restored a single unit Nobel, but you haven't restored a single unit Zimmer. Or maybe you've replaced an anterior, you know, BioHorizons, but you haven't done, like you said, a hater bar or a locator or, um, you know, a, a full arch fixed. And, you know, there's little tricks and, and ways to do things that can save you lots of time and headache and money and ensure quality treatment that, you know, your lab or your reps or, or those other places just can't teach you all, all the tricks and, and trades. So I, I think a restorative course that's not focused just on one implant and a restorative course that's not you know, it doesn't have to be a continuum. Let's just let's just get down and dirty and talk about how to restore these things, and then and then let's get let's let's get down and talk about okay, if you want a place, let's talk about how to make a guide, and and you can do it A, B, or C kind of way. But but here's a good way to do it. Yeah, and I got to be honest with you, um, if you are kind of a newbie, or maybe you've never done, let's say, a hybrid, or never done an overdenture bar, you know, really the best resource is your lab. You know, we like I'm a general dentist. So I, I got to tell you, most of what I do is single implant. So the number of restorative uh, full arch cases I've done, you know, maybe 50 in my career. So calling your lab, and labs get these cases on a weekly basis. So call your lab and say, hey, this is my first case. What do I do? They would be thrilled to kind of let you know, because usually labs kind of deal with it after the fact. So you give them a bunch of stuff and they're like, what do I do? with the stuff you gave me. So talk to them and, and figure it out, but they, um, that's really your best resource. You know, I, I couldn't agree with that more. I've, I've, uh, I call my lab on a daily basis now and okay, I'm like, even before I place the implants, all right, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Where should I, where, you know, my lab tech and I, I have this lab make my guides for them. We talk about where to put the implants in the bone, on the 3D, on the, on the CBCT. We talk about where to, where we're going to restore it. We talk about what's opposing it, what type of end product are we looking at? Is it going to be screw retained, cement retained? Is this going to be, you know, is it going to be this kind of locator or that kind of locator? And then when I get the implants in and go to the next step, I say, okay, here's what I've got. Here's how I'm going to try to take the impression. Do you have any suggestions? What would you like to see coming in? You know, then they get the case in the office and in their lab. And I say, okay, well, what do you see? What could I do different? How would you like? So I, I think that continuous 
back and forth in communication. Um, if if dentists can drop the ego and 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 be a partner with their lab, is is where they're going to get the, the the most bang for their buck. Yep, that's a great uh, great way to do it. Other than the, the teaching there, what are you doing with uh, digital enamel? I know you've got another website and some more going on with digital enamel. And I know that may not be necessarily implant focused, but but talk about that a moment. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. So so for a while, I was doing my books and I've always had a buddy, um, Dr. Todd Ehrlich. I mean, if you've ever heard uh, Todd speak, I mean, he is funny. He's great. He's like this seven foot tall Texan. And uh, he and I have been friends really since I bought my, my Cirex in 2004. And a while back, he came to me and said, hey, you know, I want to do a website and I want to call it digital enamel. And, you know, the funny thing is he was all about saving enamel. So that dude will do like a 15, 16th crown on whatever to save a shard of enamel. So he wanted me to cover um, sort of the more implant related or surgical related stuff. And he was going to cover the Cirex stuff. So, yeah, I said that was great. So we've been doing it for a while. And um, on Dental Town, uh, what Todd and I have always kind of strived for is really pretty pictures. When we look on Dental Town, we look on Facebook, there's a lot of guys that are posting cases. And look, you know, I will never discourage anyone from posting a case. I think I my dentistry has improved so much from posting cases. But you know, some guys use like an intraoral camera or there's a lot of blood in the picture and stuff like that. So what we did initially was limited to just Todd and I. And we kind of had a rule that every picture we posted had to be, you know, aesthetically pleasing. We had to make sure that there was no blood or calculus or food on patient's teeth. And um, it's, it's actually uh, done really well for us. You know, we're not um, a Cirac Doctors or any other big website. We don't um, charge anything. You don't have to use a login or a password. Um, it's just a couple of guys showing kind of cool stuff. And so we have a couple other people posting. Anyone's welcome to post um, on our site. And it's just a, a digital magazine. So it's just a way of sharing our stuff. Yeah, you've got a lot of good content on there, and I think if uh, if anybody's doing anything guided or CIRAC or implant related, I, I think there, there's a lot to learn there. And you know, it's great that you guys are just putting it out there because then you know people can figure out, hey, is this for me? And and if it is, I'm sure you've got other pathways they can go down further. And if it's not, they can just kind of keep it at the surface level and learn, hey, this is out there. I'm not doing it, but I'm gl- but I'm glad somebody is, you know, and stuff like that. And, and that's what's another great thing about sharing cases on the internet and and following. There's a lot of great sites. So Dental Hacks is a great site. Yours is a great site. You know, I subscribe to the Blue Sky Bio uh, Academy on Facebook. So it's fun to see these out there cases that I would never, ever attempt in my whole life. And it's also fun to see the bread and butter type stuff. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to emulate. So for the most part, what I post is pretty bread and butter. But every now and then I do something kind of funky and it's kind of nice to just kind of put it out there. Um, you don't have to necessarily incorporate it in your practice, but it, it's kind of fun to do. Yeah. You know, like you said, I think if anybody was really honest with you and, and labs will tell you this, you know, 90 percent of the work that's done is still a tooth at a time. And, and there's nothing oh, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. And that keeps it simple. And that's your bread and butter, butter dentistry. And that's where you're going to make your money. But it is uh, oh, yeah. it is it is fun to push it sometimes and give people some extreme results and. And some people need that yeah. and require that. And, and uh, sometimes it's great when you can do it. And sometimes it's, it's good when uh, that's out of your risk zone, but you're seeing other people do it. So I, I think it's great that, you know, there's different modalities to do things. And, um, you know, whatever's right for someone's practice is up to them. But at least there's people sharing, hey, sure. if you're interested in this, come to come to this site and kind of see what we're doing. And if you've got questions or uh, concerns, you know, there's, there's more resources for you. No, it's, it's actually kind of funny as someone who gets to travel uh, around the nation and lecture, you know, I always kind of lift an eyebrow a little bit when I come to a dentist who says, well, I only do full mouth cases. And my line to them is always, well, God, I'd love to do that, but I don't have a lot of full mouth patients. Honestly, most of what I do is single units. So I love single units. I am a single tooth dentist. I'm not a big full mouth dentist. So I would like to do bigger cases, but the bottom line is most of my patients are in recall come in and every now and then they get a cavity and, and I, I help them out. So 
what I do. If I had to do big cases all day, every day, I think I would go crazy. I mean, I think the single cases are the most fun because they're predictable, they're quick, they're easy, they're profitable, and patients love it. So, I mean, you know, that's that's where that's that's where you make your money, and that's where you you know you feel good about. But yeah, you don't you just you just don't want to get too far out in front of your skis and get into something you're not ready for. So, so um, you talked about Blue Sky Bio a little bit. Have you dabbled with some of their implants? I know you're I know you've got a uh, oh what do you call it a, a form printer and doing some some guide printing. Tell tell me tell me about what you're doing with with that whole aspect, as I know that's um, that's really got a you know a strong presence uh, moving forward with yeah. implant dentistry. So talk about that a little bit. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I got to tell you, you know, I've been using, you know, Implant Direct for a long time and I'm a big fan of their implants and I would never kind of uh, stray from that. And I've been using Serona and I love their system and um, I'm a big fan of them too. But Blue Sky Bio is this cool kind of, you know, kind of weird new sort of thing there that's really um, pretty neat. And I think all, uh, all dentistry kind of look at what they're doing. So, uh, Blue Sky Plan is a free software. Um, you can download it in a second and, uh, and play with it. One of the sort of kind of, uh, kind of almost like territorial things in implant dentistry has been, uh, exporting STL. So STL, if you think of like JPEG, it's kind of a universal, picture format, STL is the universal 3D printing format. And a lot of companies have been very, yeah, territorial about exporting. So in different companies, if you want to export to STL, you're looking at 100 to 150 bucks to get a surgical guide. Um, with Blue Sky Bio, it's depending on how many exports you buy, it's between 10 and 20 bucks. So you can plan a case of Blue Sky Plan and export the guide um, for, you know, less than 20 bucks, which is a great deal. And there's lots of 3D printers out there. And, you know, we should probably schedule another call. I could talk your ear off about 3D printing and dentistry, but it's really a great thing. And there's a lot of free software that allow you to do surgical guides, to do aligners for almost free, to do, God, anything you want, night guards, um, Essex retainers. Um, there's just a lot of things that you can do. So the Blue Sky Plan um, really allows you to do that. And um, yeah, it, it, it's really fun. If you are the type of uh, dentist who likes to kind of tinker around and play, you know, don't expect a really quick result. But if you're cool with kind of tinkering and playing, um, you can go on eBay and buy a Robox printer, which is one of the preferred cheapest printers we use in 3D printing for 500 bucks, which, you know, is, I mean, in LA, that's like a couple of dinners. So it's not really that big of a cost to get into the game, but God, there's so much cool stuff you can do with it. Yeah, no, I've, I've definitely seen some of that and, and know it's there. I, uh, I track what Blue Sky's doing and uh, definitely, I don't have the time to put that much tech savvy interest in it right now and I think it's I think that tech's still a little over my head but I passed it along I passed it along to my lab uh, tech and he's he's playing with it and he's all about it so I'm, I'm gonna let him take the charge on that and we might start making guides with that software and he said well this will keep my cost down I can get your guides to you for half the price and I'm thinking okay well this even if even if the dentist doesn't want to do it you know the lab techs can use this yeah. just the same yeah well let me ask you a question do you have a cone beam or an intraoral scanner I have a cone beam right now, and unfortunately, okay. I don't have an intraoral scanner as of yet. So with Blue Sky, if you pour up a stone model and stick it in your cone beam, you can scan that, and that's all you really need. So just put the stone model into the Blue Sky or give it to your lab to let him do that, and you're good to go. Um, he can manufacture guides from that. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's how we're going to start doing it moving forward because... Uh, I, I definitely wanted to get the cone beam before the scanner. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've just been taking the scan and sending the model. Um, yeah. you know, and we've been making guides uh, with, with a little bit more expensive company, but I think we're looking at this now thinking, okay, how can we both reduce our cost and overhead with this? And he's, uh, he definitely is on board with it. So, uh -huh. Does, Do you know if your lab has a 3D scanner in his lab? 
Well, they have a uh, they have a scanner that um, I, I don't know what kind of scanner it is. Yeah, it, it, it's for scanning the models, and so it's that would be better than you scanning uh, the model on your Chromium. Yeah, exactly. They they've got one, yeah. so they're they're set up for Nobel approved, and they've got this. Oh, right on. Yeah, okay. so I I send them the model, and they scan it, and then they take my comb beam and they integrate the two, and then we plan my software that way. But I would just at this point, I need him to. To uh, to be the uh, the brains of the operation, I just do the dentistry. Sure. So. No, no. A, there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually, you know, actually today I had one case where I had to do a custom healing abutment, and one case where I had to do a uh, a guide. And I'm like, God, I am tired. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this stuff. <laughs> I'd rather just have a lab do it. So there's nothing wrong with punting to a lab. I think that especially dentists that use CIRAC, we're sort of in this sort of weird club where you got to do everything yourself. And I've luckily kind of surpassed that. And it's like, you know what? I can do stuff chair side. I can do stuff with my machines. But sometimes, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. I just want to send it out. And I, I have no problem doing that. It's great that you have the flexibility and the know-how. And then it comes down to each particular day and week, what your workflow look like and what, where, where's your time, yeah. where's your time better spent. And if you've got patients lined up in the chair, then I think, okay, go that route. And if you've got time and, okay. or, or, or even an in-house lab person or an assistant that can take over some of no. those, uh, you know, operations, then, then you've got a lot of flexibility there. Yeah, no, I, I had a buddy of mine who I used to lecture with and he would bring in a patient on a Friday prep a bunch of teeth, mill it all out with a Cirrhic machine, it would take him 15 hours with the patient in the chair to mill out all these units. And he would be so proud of it. And I would tell him like, dude, you came on a frickin' Friday. You had a patient in the chair for 15 hours. Just spend the two grand and get a lab to do it for you. It's not that big of a deal. You know, I think there's almost like a I don't want to say a macho kind of thing, but kind of like, gosh, I'm going to do it all on my own. And uh, like you said, it's all about realizing your chair time. You know, I, if I'm totally busy and I've got patients up the yin yang, I'll take impressions and send it to a lab, you know, but if I'm slow and I got a lot of time, I'll do it all in Syrac. So, you know, I just kind of weigh my time versus what's most economical and better for the patient. Yeah, and, and better for the patient, too, because you're saying, you know, I, can't, I can do this, but and even if you want to mill it, you know, maybe just slap some temps on it and then play with it on your own time and then have the patient back because having a patient in the chair for 8, 10, 12, 15 hours, I mean, that's that's really beating them up. And uh, so I don't. That's not OK. Yeah, that's people. People aren't happy the next day. <laughs> that gum tissue is going to be angry. So, yeah, I just assume get them in and get them out. And then if I want to do it um, in house, that's great. And, and then you can always uh, restore later. So. What else are you? What else are you doing right now that you consider um, to be kind of a, a fun thing in your office or uh, with your lectures? I know you've you really stay front line. Uh, other than the three D printing, are there are there new courses you're taking, or are there new lectures that you're involved with, or are there new products that you really are excited about um, that that we haven't already covered? Yeah, you know, I, I'd probably say two things. I mean, kind of circle back on the three D printing. Um, I've really uh, been enjoying doing sort of in-house um, aligners. So before, you know, we would, you know, take a case, send it to Invisalign and have Invisalign do the aligners for us. And there's, there's been a few other companies who have come out. But now what we're doing is we're using a company called Exceed Ortho. Um, and so what we do is we take an intraoral scan. So I use Cirex and then export it out. And for $190, they do the entire aligner setup with attachments, with power ridges, with all that kind of stuff. If I want to do a suck down with brackets, they do it as well. And it's, it's you know, for aligners, it's $190. For like full on ortho with brackets, it's $295. That includes all the wires and all the brackets. Um, so I've been enjoying that. Um, what we do is we send it out to them. They do the case. They send the STL files to print um, all the models, and we do the suck down. So I've been enjoying that. And then just basic socket grafting, I've been getting a little bit better seeing sort of my results. I'm using a, a product now, which is really cool. Uh, it's 
and it sounds kind of weird, but it's a placenta based membrane. Um, the company is called Snowasis, and I pack uh, bone. I use DFDBA mineralized bone graft, and then we put this placental membrane on top of it. And uh, we've been getting really nice results on both the, the hard and soft tissue. The third thing would be uh, PRP, uh, or I'm sorry, PRF. Uh, we've been using that a lot. So platelet-rich fibrin, we've been drawing patient's blood, spinning it out, um, getting all the good stuff that you would new- use for healing and combining it with bone grafts. So those are like the three things, I guess, now that I've been doing in practice that I've been enjoying. Yeah, that's that's great. I think... You know, and, and some of those are just kind of going back to the surgeries and saying, okay, we've got all these fancy toys and we've got this and that. Now let's go back to the anatomy and, and really dive deep there and say, okay, how can I get better at socket grafting? How can I get better at preserving health? How can I get better at creating ideal health? And, uh, you know, those products are, you know, frontline molecular on, on, on the front of the technology boom and saying, okay, how can we help patients get healthier with the better healing and the, and the better generation of their own bone and their own tissues and all of that. I, I think those three are, are going to have huge growth in the next five years. L- let's talk about the PRF. I just, um, I just did a, uh, my last podcast actually was, it was about PRF, which, which setup did you go with and, and how did you get any, any sort of training with that? Or, or is that just something you picked up on your own and, and what kit are you using for that? <laughs> Good question, actually. You know, first off, I should say that the best kit you should get is um, from Boca Dental Supply. I guess they have um, an IPRF and an APRF kit where they really not bad. It's like $1,500. It um, gives you the ability to do um, APRF versus IPRF. So I guess if I understand it correctly, APRF, is kind of that yellow boogery looking stuff that you mix with your bone graft. IPRF lets you do a uh, procedure called sticky bone, where you can actually mix bone in and make sort of shapes. You can build out a ridge. You can do all sorts of great stuff. Um, I don't have that kit. I went on eBay. Oh, and, good. Yeah, um, I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I went on eBay, and for 250 bucks, I bought a APRF centrifuge. Um, and I think for about a hundred bucks, I bought, uh, a little kit that allows you to do the stuff you need to do. It's good, but you know, I really want to try the IPRF, um, and it doesn't spin it out. It only spins out on one speed. And it's kind of funny. The centrifuge is so ghetto. You have to like hold it down because it wants to take off, like, it starts spinning and it starts wiggling around like the whole counter. It, it wants to like fall off the counter. So anyone who's a newbie, I would highly recommend uh, Boca Dental Supply. It's really reasonable. I think it's like 1200 bucks uh, and it gives you the ability to do everything. And they give you like the, the vials, the needles, everything. But, you know, also as a newbie, um, there's, there's people out there that just say, oh, God, no problem. We do it on every patient. I think it's kind of BS, to be honest with you, because there are experienced RNs in hospitals that can find a vein on anyone. So you'll have patients that are overweight, uh, patients that have low blood pressure, and you cannot find their veins. So I pretty much, you know, like factor the patient based on how big their veins are. So if they've got a really big fat vein, I'll do PRF on them. If I did not, and I really want to do it, it's kind of weird, but there's a podiatrist who practices next door to us. We bribe his nurses with pizza. So we tell them, if you come in and draw blood for us, we'll buy you guys pizza. You know, a pizza is like 20 bucks, so it's not a big deal. We charge about 300 bucks for a PRF. So we have the luxury of having nurses who work for pizza. You know, I think anybody would work for pizza if you, if you catch them at the right time of day. So pizza I think, great. yeah, that's fantastic. I, think I, fill, I would certainly do a filling for pizza. Oh, yeah. M- maybe a one surface. But, uh, you know, I've, I, yeah. I, I actually just got the kit myself and um, am just getting that integrated in my practice. And I think at first, like you said, part of it for me is just that that blood draw centrifuge workup and get it ready. I'm, I'm comfortable with everything else, but 
Um, that's just right. the whole element. I'm not uh, buffed up on my skills. So I'm going to get a, uh, there's there's a mobile phlebotomy service in my town where I can pay a phlebotomist. Oh, that's great. And, and he'll show up and do it for 50 bucks with, you know, advance notice. So I'll just, I'll just roll it into my fee and just kind of cruise on. That's great. No, I've heard, um, actually, uh, uh, dentist, uh, great idea. What they'll do is they'll hand the patient the vials and then they will call the phlebotomist ahead of time and tell them what the variables are to get A or IPRF. So a lot of phlebotomists have, uh, centrifuges that they can change settings on. So they'll send the patient with the vial to the phlebotomist, have the blood drawn. Now, you got to hightail it back because I think you, you have less than, I think, 10 minutes to spin it. So if, if you got a phlebotomist in your building, it works great. If you have a phlebotomist across town, it's not so great. Yeah, I, I, I think there's definitely things to look at. I won't be doing it every patient, but if there's patients where I need it, I'm, I'm going to plan that around the phlebotomist or, or maybe plan a couple in a day and have the phlebotomist come for two hours and I do two or three cases in that time and, and kind of knock it out that way. But yeah, I'm not, I'm definitely into it. I think it's going to be great. Um, I, I'm excited about that. Now, I haven't tried anything with the uh, placenta membranes. I, I did notice that on, uh, I think you've got a post about that on your digital enamel and I was trying to, I was trying to track about that. Um, talk to me about how you got exposed to that and what you're doing with that. Obviously, that's not an every time thing. There, there's got to be some cost involved with that. I can't, I can't believe that that's uh, cheap. And then there's also got to be maybe certain indications that you would use that for. So kind of talk about how you got exposed to that. Sure. I, I got to be honest with you. My fiance works uh, in the medical industry and she works for a company who uses placenta for orthopedics and um, for um, big wound closures. So let's say you're a diabetic and you have a big ulcer that's exposed on your foot. And these diabetic ulcers are giant and they take forever to heal. Also, diabetics in general have uh, take forever to heal. So they have found in medicine that, and it, it, it sounds weird, but sliced up placenta um, as a membrane um, exposes the wound to undifferentiated cells. So these cells just sort of take on whatever tissue they need to be. And the healing she was showing me was unreal. I mean, it was someone has a gaping wound that's probably about, you know, we deal with millimeters, so they deal with centimeters, like 10 centimeters wide. And in like two weeks, it's totally healed up. So um, there's been some dentists that have been using placenta in the mouth. And so there's this company, Snowasis, that's spelled S N O A. SIS, and they make small placental membranes uh, for extraction sockets. So in essence, an extraction socket is an open wound. It's um, to be healed by secondary intent. So I've been using it. I've been seeing some really good results. Um, it's kind of weird. Initially, there's some weird inflammation that goes on. So you have to warn your patient, you know, for the week after you put them in, it's going to kind of hurt. Um, but, uh, the, the basis is these undifferentiated cells become bone or hard tissue and people say, well, I can do that with, with PRF. And, uh, the argument from the placenta people are sure, but if you do a socket graft on an 80 year old with PRF, you're doing it with 80 year old cells. Um, placenta is age zero cells. So the response is a lot better. Cost-wise, I got to tell you, it's as cheap as regular collagen. I'm paying about 80 bucks a membrane. So not not bad at all. No, that's really not. I, I thought you'd say something around the two to $300 range. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, any membrane you buy that's worth a darn is going to be between 50 and 100. So yeah, it, so, it's about the same price. Yeah. Now, um, What's, what's the shelf life on that? I mean, it, it, you got to keep it in the fridge in a dark place and it's only good for a couple of weeks. Or, I mean, what's, what's that like? Uh, do, do you know about that? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the shelf life is about a month. We don't order a ton of them. So I probably do 10 socket graphs a month. So we order about 15, 10 to 15. So we're turning them over. Not too bad. Now there's different companies that recommend 
freeze drying them and doing some weird stuff. But Snow Aces is just um, just re- refrigeration. Now, um, what's your what's your chair side talk look like or uh, consent form talk about when we're doing placenta? Has that changed the conversation a little bit for some people? Oh God! Oh yeah! You know it's so funny because. Um, it, you know, it's it, it, you. You gotta tell your patients about what you're using. So I remember I used um, BioOS back in the day, and that's uh, I believe that's that sort of um, hydroxyacetate. And I never really had to tell the patients about it because it was not human. And then I, I took some courses and started to do stuff with you know um, human bone, and I would tell them, and actually. I'm not embellishing. I had a vegan patient who said, well, I don't take any animal products and that's an animal product because it's human. So, um, you know, I tell the patients, but I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I tone it down. So when I talk to them, I say, Hey, you know, we're going to use this material. It's cadaver bone. It's, um, it's sterilized. It's irradiated. It has no cells. And on top of it, we're going to put a coating, same deal completely sterile, irradiated, it's placenta, and uh, it's all stem cells, and the stem cells regenerate, you know, your body. And I think a lot of people are keyed into stem cells and using stem cells. So I haven't had any pushback, except for the one lone vegan. But besides that, um, I haven't had a problem. But it's all, you know, I, I think in dentistry is how you frame it. So if you're kind of weird and sheepish about it, then the patient's going to get freaked out. But if you're like, hey, this is the best stuff, it's totally safe, it's totally irradiated, they don't care. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that's true w- w- with any product you use. Um, but it, well, with grafting, yeah, if you present it right, talk to them about it and say, look, this is what I use. Here's why I use it. I would use it on myself. And, and we're using it on you because this is what's going to give us the best result. And at the end, that's what it's all about. And Yeah, I think I, I think it's all in how you present it and, and with confidence and um you know, most people move forward with that, but that's, that's definitely interesting. I hadn't heard about that. I try to keep my ear to the ground on a lot of things and I, I have not heard of the placenta. So that's, that's, that's a new one. And I'll be looking forward to, to getting a couple of those and trying them. Yeah. I mean, you know, the price is great. I mean, if you're going to use the, the, the claim to fame about placenta too, is you can leave it exposed. So you don't have to use you know, a uh, non resorbable membrane. You can use this placenta. Yeah, and, and, and that's a big thing because anytime you leave something exposed, it's like, okay, what am I doing now? And, and are we going in and fetching stuff out later? And what's the, uh, what's, what's the turnover time? What's the, what's the healing time? So there's, there's definitely, definitely different things to think about, different areas of the mouth, different kind of graphs and, and results that you're looking for. So it's just good to have lots of tricks to use and, and ones that, um, you know, work for different scenarios. Why don't we wrap up with just a couple things here? Um, tell me, uh, as far as all the things you're doing, if, if somebody wants to see you or get some information from you, what's the best way to get a course for you? What's what's a good what's a good course for a starter to say? Look, I'm I'm either just getting into implants or I haven't done a lot. What's what's the best one that they should take that that you offer? And um, what's 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 a good place you could point them in a direction and say, hey, if you, if you just did one or two things, here's what I would do. Good question, and I would love to uh, you know recommend it myself. But I got to be honest with you. I mean, I think there's a lot of great. If you've never placed an implant, I am probably not <laughs> the guy for you. So what I do is is uh, kind of techy. So if you're a newbie, um, I would recommend um, my buddy Todd Engel. Not Todd Ehrlich, but Todd Engel, E N G E L. Um, he has an institute out of North Carolina, and he does these courses all over the nation. And he'll bring you patients, and he will. You can do implants on these patients, or you can go to North Carolina, and if you have a, a valid license, um, you can do an implant in North Carolina. So you can take these courses, take a one-on-one course. I'd recommend that. But after you take that course, um, come see me. Um, so you can either contact uh, a Patterson dealer. Um, they have my schedule. Um, go on digitalenamel.com and you can see my schedule there. Um, I also lecture for Implant Direct. So implantdirect.com has my schedule as well. So I'm 
kind of all over the place. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, I've actually got um I think I've got Todd on on the books for a podcast it's sometime in March. So that's I'm glad that you're recommending oh God, him. He's, yeah. He's fun. Yeah, he's I've, he's definitely fun. I've heard from a lot of high profile people that he does great work. So I'm excited to get him on so he can talk about his um his course and let people know what's involved there. I've take I've taken some implant direct courses, not any of yours, but I, I think they're great. I've taken one of your uh, digital dentistry courses, and, and I've really enjoyed that. So I think I'm going to try to pick up uh, another one of your courses this year. It may be the Implant Direct one. It, it may be another, but I'm I'm, I'm definitely uh, I love following your posts on on Dental Town with uh, with with all that stuff. Yeah, so I'll I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to to pick you up somewhere, and and it'll probably be an Implant Direct at that um, at, at the digital one or the restorative one, just because I think you you can never get too many people's opinions and point of views on. Uh, you know how to do things better so you got uh you got a great uh outlook so awesome looking forward in 2017 to, to close up here what's what's one thing that you want to to do differently in your practice in 2017 you know i gotta be honest with you i think i think that um 3d printing is where everything is heading and um currently with 3d printing all you can really print is models and plastic stuff but there's companies coming out with metal and all that stuff. So if you're looking at, you know, to being ahead of the curve, um, I would look at 3D printing. I would look at digital imaging. So whether it's CIRAC or another company, um, I think digital uh, impression and imaging is really something that's going to be out there. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's time for me to take the digital plunge. I mean, it's it 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 seems like it won't be long before it will be digitally 3d printing uh, zirconia or, or pfms or something i mean i feel like i don't know how that stuff's possible but I, i'm gonna leave that to the guy smarter than me but yeah I, I think you you can't afford to just ignore the digital part you know you, you have to embrace it and engage it at some level even if you're not the guy designing it you have to be at least incorporating it into your office so i i, I think that's a good thing to keep an eye on because you know we're definitely not heading backwards in technology and dentistry and 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 if you're not on that on the top of that tidal wave it's gonna you know i feel like it's gonna roll you over in the next five years so yeah well i mean exciting uh stuff going on i'm going to the ids in a couple of weeks in germany so it'll be interesting to see what other companies have out it is yeah i, I always like to keep my eye, uh one eye on the medical and then one eye on um, overseas, because it seems like they're both light years ahead of American dentistry. I got to be honest with you, though. I, I, I disagree on medical. I think that we in dentistry, we are way out in front of medical. I got a buddy of mine who's an ENT who is so disillusioned by the medical CT scanners, he bought a dental CT scanner. So he's like, you guys got it going on. <laughs> you know, I want, I want your guys' stuff. I don't want this cheesy medical stuff well that's good it's it's finally it's finally good to uh gain some ground on something here in the states but yeah absolutely i think uh you know anybody anybody that can that can get some inspirational knowledge like i said at those, at those um worldwide meetings i, I think you know you just got to see what, how other people are doing it keep your eye on the on the technology and always be ready to uh to learn and, and grow into new things so you got it well august thank you for your time this evening it's been great talking to you um Hopefully look forward to catching you at one of your courses soon and uh, keep up the good work, my friend. Got it. Well, th hey, thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. And yeah, I mean, you just let me know. We'll hang out and have some fun. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.